Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings, but the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. So today's business birthday is Charles Elmer Hires, born August 19, 1851. He died July 31st at the age of 85. In 1937, he was an American pharmacist and an early promoter of commercially prepared root beer. Now, I don't know what it is with pharmacists, but apparently pharmacists ran this country in the late 1800s, <laughs> didn't they? They did everything. If you were Coca-Cola, a pharmacist, you pretty much owned the world. Heinz, yeah. Aspirin. So, yeah, everything, right? So he founded the Charles E. Hires Company, which manufactured and distributed Hires Root Beer. So, in fact, Hires Root Beer made him famous, and Root Beer made Hires a millionaire. But uh, he actually got the recipe from a woman in New Jersey when he was on his honeymoon. So he did not invent it, but he actually got it from a a, uh, a woman. He was born uh, August 19th, as I said, to a Quaker family. And at 12, he was sent to go work as an apprentice in a, in a drugstore owned by uh, one of his brother-in-laws. And uh, so at 16, he moved back to Philadelphia. He worked at a pharmacy. He saved $400, so he was able to start his own drugstore. And then he got married. He went on his honeymoon to New Jersey, and there was a woman there that ran this hotel they were staying at that served him. And I, I tried different ways to look this up. So it's T-I-S-A-N-E. So some people say it French, tisane, and some people say it with the English way, tisane. Tisane. Mm-hmm. But it's, but it's, a, it's a, uh, a herbal root tea. So it's made with a bunch of different roots. And so he drank this on his honeymoon and really liked it and convinced the woman to give him the recipe. So he originally, so he gets this recipe, he goes back to his drugstore, and he starts playing around in different ways. He's going to make this concoction, and uh, and sell it to uh, sell it to the public. So a friend of his, who coincidentally was one of the founders of Temple University, Russell Conwell, convinced him that nobody's going to buy tea. They don't want root tea. You should call it beer. So they ended up calling it root beer, and they said, particularly with the people in Pennsylvania, they're a little bit rough and hard drinking. So they said that they'd be more likely buy it if you called it root beer rather than root tea. <laughs> so he also had That's the idea really of serving. That's really how it got the beer. What's that? That's really how beer got added to it. Yeah, because it was because it, they didn't think no no one's going to buy root tea, but they'll buy root beer. And so the other thing was he decided to serve it cold. And we you you and I talked about this on uh, on our uh, on our podcast TFG Unbuttoned with Dr Pepper. So they used to serve so this root tea was served hot, was served, served very hot. So he decided, well, I'm going to serve it cold. So that's, so root beer was cold. This root tea was, was warm. So instead of serving warm root beer, he served cold root beer. And, um, so he packaged it in boxes and originally tried to sell it to housewives and, and, um, soda fountains, uh, in this powdered box. And all you had to do is add sugar and yeast. It never caught on sugar and yeast. Yeah, you had to add sugar and yeast and to this yeast. To I this wonder root why concoction. yeast would be part of it. Uh, the root beer <laughs> part, I guess, right? I guess so. So the drink did not catch on. So his friend, again, Conwell, persuaded him to present the product at the 1876 U.S. Centennial Exposition and call it the temperance drink, because right then was when people were against um, drinking alcohol. So this was going to be the temperance. It was marketed as the temperance drink and the greatest health-giving beverage in the world. I would have loved to seen th- that exhibition because everything was the best in the world, greatest in the world. Was this the Chicago? You said this was the Chicago World Series? No, Fair? Philadelphia. The Philadelphia, Philadelphia Centennial okay. Exposition in Philadelphia in 1876. So he did. So Hires himself did not drink, although he, when he marketed this as root beer, um, he said it was an alternative to alcohol. But then somebody um, said to him that there was, in fact, alcohol in the root beer. And so there was a big boycott against it. The, the Women's Christian Temperance Union started, started a boycott. So he ended up doing his own analysis because he did heavy, heavy advertising about this being uh, an alternative to alcohol to try to get people to, to buy it. And uh, in the long run, what they found out, there was such a trace level of alcohol. They said it was about the same as a half a loaf of bread was the same amount of alcohol. So after he was able to get beyond that, the business flourished. They opened up a factory in Philadelphia on Arch Street. And the 100 block, if anybody's familiar with Philadelphia, it's shocking that there would even be a factory there. There's lots of lots of loss, and it's a, a great place in Old City. So the company was established in 1890, and uh, he started selling, instead of the powdered mix, he put it in pre-mixed bottles in 1893. He remained active in the company until his son took over in 1925. 
he died uh, in the Haverford, PA area. His The estate that his family had is now the site of a, a Jewish temple on the main line in Philadelphia. Kind of an odd fact or a fun fact, his mother was a direct descendant of Martha Washington. Uh, the Martha Washington. Direct yeah. descendant. Direct descendant of Martha Washington. So happy birthday, Charles Elmer Hires. I used to love root beer. Root beer floats. Same here. I haven't had root Still beer do. in a while, though. Have you? Uh, we had a root beer float about three weeks ago because we found a can of diet root beer in the refrigerator <laughs> and we had vanilla ice cream. It's one of my favorite treats. That's funny. So you actually made a root beer float. Mm -hmm. We used to have them a lot Is more it? in the past. They, they are great. They are fantastic. I love root beer floats. <laughs> I see. This is something new. I've, I can't believe I'm learning this after all these years of knowing you that you're a root beer float guy. Really? Yeah. I don't think I've ever known you to be a root beer float guy. Oh, I love it. I love the flavor. love the taste. It's uh, one of the best, man.